Hello, Eastbridge Presbyterian Church. It is so good to be with you. So, uh, so glad to have finally gotten to a place where we are in, uh, in worship together, uh, worshiping with God's people. Uh, we're still communicating and uh, seeking to encourage you during the week with this video blog. And um, uh, we just, we know that things, you know, when we think things are going to be turning uh, for the best, we, we're reminded that, that we're not in control. Um, and as we've seen cases rise of uh, COVID-19 and as we've seen uh, a variety of struggle and uh, pain in our country, um, we can only, as God's people do, uh, turn our eyes and our hearts and our lives uh, back to the one who can give us true comfort. And um, this week on Sunday, we celebrated Father's Day. And um, I know for some people, Father's Day is a very difficult time. Uh, for some of us, we didn't have a good relationship with our father. Uh, for some of us, like myself, um, my father is uh, gone to be with the Lord, and I, I miss him. And so when I think about Father's Day, I'm often uh, struggling because of how much I do and I did love my dad and, and how much I'm missing him. And, uh, and for some people, there have been no father at all. And for others, there is a positive and a wonderful and... Um, nothing but good feelings and, and, and thoughts about their own fathers. Um, and so a few weeks ago, I did a, um, a blog about, about being children of God and how, how God has called us into his family. Uh, but the, really the emphasis there was about how God's patience with us as we, his children, uh, we disobey, we fall into sin, we are uh, struggling as we... Um, willfully and um, sometimes gladly sin against our Father, and yet He has patience and kindness and uh, love for us and, and and forgiveness. And so I was thinking about it, just a couple of things that I wanted to remind us as we think about, even though there are bad fathers, even though there is no perfect father on earth, um, we have a perfect heavenly father. And I just wanted to encourage you with just four things really quickly as we wrestle with that this week so that we can hold fast to that, that we can be secure in that. Not because um, we just time, we need this, it's timely. Oh, there's, there's things that we're afraid of, things that we're worried about. Certainly that's always true. That is always true, that there are things that we, should, that we are worried about that there are things that are hard that are happening. It, it will happen in a fallen, sinful world until Jesus returns. But we can hold fast to these four things, no matter what, about our Heavenly Father and how good He is, how kind He is, how gracious He is. And so I'm going to read to you guys uh, from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 8, verse 6. It says this, Yet for us there is one God the Father from whom are all, all things and for whom we exist. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. And so if it weren't for Jesus, we wouldn't exist. If it, Jesus the creator, Jesus the one who made all things, the one who was there at creation, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, through him we exist. But but then it says this, there's one God, the Father, from whom are all things. So all things came from him, but for whom we exist. And that's a reminder that human beings were made for a relationship with the Heavenly Father. And that relationship only happens through um, the work of Jesus Christ. The only that by placing our faith in Jesus are we able to have life. Are we able to uh, have purpose? Um, but that's what's so wonderful is that the heavenly, our Heavenly Father made us for a purpose. You and I are not just randomly walking the earth. We have a distinct purpose. God has gifted you. God has made you. God has given you um, attributes and uh, different abilities so that you can serve Him. You exist for Him. It says, the, uh, there's one God, the Father, from whom all are all things, 
and for whom we exist. We exist for him. We exist for his glory. We have a purpose to glorify God in all that we do, and it's for him. And that's such an incredible thing that, that we are not just um, wanderers. We are not just people who are missing uh, the, 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 the purpose of life. We are, as God's people, we have a purpose, and that's to glorify him through all of our lives. And so that's one, one thing he gives us that, that reminds us that, that our God, uh, our Father in heaven, is so great. And, and second um, is that he cares for us in our weakness, Psalm 68 5 says that God is father of the fatherless and protector of widows. And, and it's a reminder that, that we, in our, our weakest state, no matter how hard things are here and now with work, life, your family, your children, it doesn't matter that um, that God doesn't change. He is one who cares even in the midst that he doesn't change his emotions towards us when these things are bad. He continues to be father to the fatherless, protector of the widow, lover of those who are in weakness. And so God is a father who cares for the weak. And I think about that. There are moments when my children are at their weakest point and they're at their most vulnerable and they're hurting or they're crying or they, they're in pain physically or they're in pain emotionally. Um, and, and God still cares for us in our weakness just as we seek to care for our children in their weakness. And so we have uh, those first two points that God has given us a purpose uh, God cares for us in his weakness. And, and here's what's awesome and, and just kind of takes that, he, his care for us. Where does that care for us come from? It comes from the fact that our Heavenly Father has a tender heart uh, towards his children, towards his, um, uh, the, his church and those who belong to him. Uh, in Psalm 103, it says, As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. And that's from Psalm 103, uh, verse 13. And God has a tender heart for you. Uh, not, let's, let's forget how often we think about God's so big, God's so far away, but God is intimately close. He's willing to be your father. He's willing to make you his children. He is absolutely in love with his people and his children, and he has a tender heart for you. Um, Eastbridge, God has a tender heart for you and for me and for all of his children. And I find that to be so incredible because we often forget how um, God sings over us. God delights in us. Um, he blesses us also. And that's what I want to finish up with is that um, we have a great God and Father. And in Ephesians 1 verse 3, Paul in his greeting, he's saying, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. We are blessed by our Heavenly Father. And that's such an incredible uh, statement, and it could be taken as a very simple thing. We say, oh, well, God just gives us good things. But we, what is the ultimate blessing that our Father has given us? Relationship with Him and eternal life with him through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that includes every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. God has poured himself out through Jesus so that we might be blessed both now and eternally. And so we don't have uh, a father who is um, uh, just going to give us good earthly things. God the Father does do that, but he gives us good beautiful blessings that last eternally. And that's only through, ultimately, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you know Christ, if you know Jesus, you are going to be blessed beyond measure, not just here on earth in, in small ways, but eternally. And we, as God's people, regardless of what's happening in the world, regardless of what's going on in our lives, regardless of the circumstances that we live in, we have a loving Father, and so I wanted to remind us of that, um, and remember that, so that we can can when we when we have these moments like Father's Day, we're able to pivot and remember the goodness of who God is, and hold fast to those truths, so that we might 
grow. We might be encouraged. We might be able to encourage others in, in the body of Christ at Eastbridge, uh, but also so that we might have assurance, that we might remember how good God is to us, his people. And so I'm so grateful that we have a father that even though I'm a father now and I know my weaknesses and my children, if they were here, they would say, yes, he's got great, a lot of weaknesses. But um, I'm grateful that we have a father in heaven that transcends weakness and in fact crushed weakness at the cross and there will be no more, no more sin, no more brokenness, no more heartache. And we will one day dwell in our perfect family with the host of heaven praising the Lord and we will be with our heavenly father who loves us dearly eternally and so I'm excited about that I'm glad for that and I hope you are too um, well let, let's pray really quickly and then uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next Lord's Day let's pray heavenly father we are so grateful that you are our eternal father that you um, love us that you care for us that you bless us that you uh, know us in our weakness and you still delight in us and lord you gave us blessing that transcends everything on earth and that is eternal life in christ and so lord we pray that you would give us just great assurance great confidence in you and an excitement to serve you in all that we do we thank you for the lord jesus and we pray this in his name amen Bye, Bridge. Have a good day.